Today we have a request from the Patreon squad. We're taking a look at the CZ Scorpion Evo 3 S1 on Sunday gun day. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. It is that day again and this one goes out to everyone out there who supports the channel over on Patreon. Every once in a while I let the Patreon squad nominate and vote on which guns they want to see here on Sunday Gun Day. There were a few top contenders this time around but this thing definitely won by a majority vote and it is also one of the most requested guns in its category in my comment sections. So the Patreons chose and they have good taste because today we're taking a look at the CZ Scorpion Evo 3 S1. The CZ Scorpion has been around for a long time already and chances are you know everything about it, so let's just get some of the regular things out of the way real quick. This is a blowback operated semi-automatic pistol chambered in 9mm with a short 7 and 3 quarter inch barrel. I put the emphasis on pistol because legally it should be treated as such. I have already upgraded everything that I do not like about stock Scorpions, starting with the SB Tactical side folding pistol brace. If you know me, you know I can't stop there, so from the top down I also added a Holosun 403A red dot, which actually fits very well with the low profile and adjustable CZ sights. The Scorpion has ambidextrous controls and a swappable charging handle, but I actually opted to delete the safety on the right side of the gun, and I will explain why in a little bit. To improve the ergonomics, I replaced the stock grip with a Pathfinder grip, which drastically reduces the angle of your wrist while shooting. And up front, I also added a few Magpul rail covers to hide the plasticky Picatinny rails. The last thing I did was replace the awful heavy stock trigger with not only an HB Industries reduced weight trigger kit, but also a Theta flat face trigger. Now out of the box, the Scorpion is a decent package. However, there are definitely things that can be upgraded, which is why I did all of these things to the gun. The retail price on an EVO 3 S1 in its pistol configuration as it comes from the factory is around $850. With all of these upgrades, including the brace and the optic, you're looking at about $1,000 to $1,200 now. That is actually starting to put us into the Chris Vector type of territory price-wise. And this is actually the gun that I chose to go with when I was looking for something in this sub-gun type of category. So needless to say, this thing will definitely be used for a little bit of comparison throughout this video. Now let's jump right into the range footage. Luckily, I have these 32 round magazines, so I definitely have a lot of ammo there to get a good first mag impression. Do you think... 32 rounds is enough to get a good first mag impression. I think that'll be pretty good. Alright, back for my first impression of the CZ Scorpion EVO 3 S1. I've shot these before in the past, but I never highlighted my opinion on them on the channel. Like I said before, when I was in the market for a small pistol caliber subgun like this, I opted for the Vector over the Scorpion. It was a close battle, and in the end, I went with the Vector simply for the way that it feels while shooting it. The whole idea and design behind this gun was to take that recoil energy and re-vector it downwards with this crazy contraption that they have inside of here. Because of the design of this thing, it shoots unlike anything else. The recoil is almost completely non-existent and it really does shoot unlike anything else. Now the Scorpion on the other hand is a blowback design so there is actually another gun that I compare how this thing shoots to and now some of you are not going to like this comparison. I know the Scorpion basically has a cult following, everyone who owns one loves it to death and I'm not making this comparison in a negative way at all so let me explain a little bit before you attack me in the comments. The CZ Scorpion shoots very similar to a kel Sub 2000. This is a blowback design and the Scorpion is a blowback design. Now I'm not saying they are very comparable in quality or price point for that matter. Form factor wise, this thing does fold up pretty small. 
And then as the Scorpion comes without the brace, here I have it folded up, you can see they are relatively the same size. If I had to pick between the two of these, I would definitely choose the Scorpion, but they do have similar characteristics when shooting just because of the blowback design. When comparing the action on this thing to say the Vector, I would definitely classify this as being more violent. It's more in your face because it is taking that energy from the spent casing to push back the bolt and then chamber a new round. I would actually compare this to something like an AK and the Vector would be something more like an AR. So when you have this thing up to your shoulder, there obviously isn't a whole lot of buffer in here to cut back on that recoil. This big chunky bolt is coming back relatively fast and it is in a polymer type of frame. This whole gun is basically plastic. So because of that, it is a very unique feeling gun. This one is of course shooting nine millimeter rounds. I was shooting 115 full metal jackets that day. So it definitely is very manageable to shoot, especially if you equip it with something like this SB brace. And when I first started branching out and testing out different guns, I was never a huge fan of the blowback design, but something like this has definitely grown on me over the years and this thing is actually very fun to shoot. Now, as you could hear with all of that steel ring, I was definitely very accurate with this thing. This Holosun Red Dot is actually very nice, although it is more on the budget end when compared to some other options out there. It has over 50,000 hours of battery life, which should equate to about five years of use. And there's also a motion wake setting, that way if this thing is sitting in your safe, it will turn off after eight hours, but then when you go to pick it up, it will turn itself back on. It's made out of a high strength aluminum, making itself feel more solid than this plasticky gun that it is on. It is parallax free, and supposedly this thing is waterproof up to about 100 meters. Now before that first mag, I did not have a chance to zero this thing at all. I was basically just hoping that these low profile CZ sights would be on from the factory. So I threw the hollow sun on there with the low mount right in the middle of the gun and then set that red dot right on top of the front post. It actually co-witnesses fairly well and I only had to do some minor adjustments out there on the range. There's also one more thing that I want to mention about this, but we will get to that after we shoot this thing some more. Now for the Ergos on the Scorpion, this is something that I really did not like from the factory, which is why I change so much on here. And if you look into the CZ Scorpion community, a lot of people do the same type of things like this to their Scorpions as well. The first thing I did was obviously add the SB Tactical Brace. This thing is a side folder with a little button on the back here. The gun comes out of the box looking pretty similar to this. There is just a back plate here. So this was actually a very easy installation. I basically slipped that back plate off and then slipped this one on with a little set screw. So it still keeps this thing very compact, but now I have the nice addition of a stabilizing brace on here. You could definitely shoot this thing like a pistol, which you will see me do here in a little bit, but this is just way more fitting and it makes the gun more fun to shoot in my opinion. Now also for the ergonomics, I did end up switching out the grip for this black Pathfinder grip. The gun obviously came gray from the factory, so I tried to put as many black accents on here as possible. Now the stock grip on the Scorpions have a very extreme grip angle to them, so you really have to angle your wrist forward to get a nice firm purchase on there. This would be very similar to running a Magpul K2 grip on an AR, which I basically do to all of my guns. It brings that angle down to be a little less extreme. And instead of my wrist being at an angle like this, when I bring it down, it just feels much more comfortable and more natural to shoot for me. Also for the ergonomics, like I said, I covered these Picatinny rails up here just because they're plasticky rails. Yes, you could mount a light on there or something similar to that, but I would rather have something to grab onto. I use three sections of the black covers on each side and then two on the bottom. And then this actually comes from the factory with this little black hand stop up front, which is very important. You will see why I'm saying that in a little bit. The only other thing that I did ergonomics wise was delete the right side safety on this gun. The first thing that most people will tell you that as soon as you pick up a scorpion and you go to fire it, if you're not wearing gloves, that safety is going to dig right into the side of your trigger finger. You can sort of get an example here on the left side. If I am pulling this trigger with my left finger, as you can see, my trigger finger is running right into the side of that safety. Now it's not sharp, it is a little bit rounded, but obviously that is not going to be very comfortable after a long time of shooting. On safe, it is fine, but as soon as you go to fire that thing, it is right in the way. Not the best design in my opinion. So of course on the right side, I deleted it with the HB Industries Delete Kit. You simply take the lower off, take a little screw out, slip this thing on, and then screw it back in. Now whether the gun is on safe or fire, it is flush and nothing is going to be running into my hand or my trigger finger. Other than that, the rest of the controls are fairly easy to get to. The magazine release is a little bit different here. You kind of push forward on this paddle. They do make different upgrades for this too. There is a ton of aftermarket support for the Scorpions, but that actually doesn't bother me. You can get to it with your trigger finger or of course your offhand support thumb. Same thing with the bolt catch on this side of the gun. 
When you are inserting a new mag, you can come right up here with your thumb and release that bolt with no problem at all. Now the charging handle is a little bit small, but again, that is something that you can upgrade. One thing that I actually love about this charging handle is that you can lock it back how it is now and then simply bump it down like you would on an ump. One other quick thing to note before we start shooting this thing some more is the magazines. These things are actually very nice. The gun does come with two 20 round magazines. They are this kind of smoke translucent color. And then I actually got a bunch of these 32 round magazines in a combo deal with the SB Tactical Brace. I really like these mags because you can see the round count on the side. I think they look really good with the gun. So far, they function flawlessly for me. And although this is a pistol, they do not load like traditional pistol mags. There are two metal lips on the top here and you can simply push nine millimeter rounds in through the top like you would on an AR magazine. Now after that first mag, I'm definitely liking the Scorpion, but let's check out some more of that range footage and then I will come back for my final impressions. With the way this stock is designed and the way that it folds, it should be able to eject that brass out over here. So far, it's looking like the ejection pattern is pretty normal. There's little piles all over the range. So let's see how it does shooting it as an actual pistol. A little awkward. Seems to work though. Now I'm back here at 50 yards. I'm going to try out these stumpy little mags that this thing comes with. They kind of look funny when compared to the 32 rounders. As for the red dot and the accuracy at this distance, I really just put the dot right on top of the sights that are already on here, co-witness pretty well. So let's see if just doing that gives this thing any kind of accuracy at a distance. I think it's a little bit to the left right now. I'm gonna shoot a couple more, a little bit slower and make sure it's not me. It is a hair left, so I'm gonna bring it a tiny bit to the right, and then we'll go back even further and see how it does at about 100 yards. All right, I'm back here at almost 100 yards right now, and I noticed when trying to get this thing zero that it was actually not tight on there. Both the sight and gun are obviously brand new, so I guess it needed a little time to get set on there. It seems to be back to co-witness now, so let's see if I can land some shots at a distance like this. Whew, I'm shaky today. How about the little five and a half inch targets? Got one. That's not too terrible. Like I said, I'm feeling a little shaky today, but this thing seems to be pretty damn accurate for not actually sitting down at a bench and zeroing this red dot in.
How about a 32 round mag dump? Whew. That can be exhausting after a little while. All right guys, back for my final thoughts on the Scorpion Evo 3 S1. I say these are my final thoughts, but there's a very good chance that you guys will see this gun on the channel a lot more in the future. Now let's start off with the sight again because there is one more thing that I wanted to say about it. As you saw when shooting there, I did need to adjust it just a little bit. It held zero just fine, but the more that I shot this thing, the more that I realized that it was coming loose. Now I did have this thing tightened down pretty tight to begin with. So I'm not sure if it is the plasticky rail on top or maybe the cold weather had something to do with it. But after shooting a couple mags through this thing, the recoil definitely rattled this thing loose. I could honestly take the sight and rock it forward and backward inside of the Picatinny rail slots. But for the rest of the time out there, it did hold it zero. And now once I came back, I did tighten this thing down way tighter than I thought that I would need to. So hopefully this thing is not going anywhere. And then once I realize that it is set in place after I shoot it some more, I will probably lock tight it in there just to be sure. Now another thing that you guys saw there in the video is that when I have this thing folded up into its natural pistol configuration, if you want to call it that, the way the SP tactical brace is cut, this thing can still eject the brass without an issue. This thing really launches the brass pretty far from where you are standing and shooting, but it is very consistent as well. Like I said while I was shooting, if I was standing in one spot, there would be neat little piles of brass all around the range depending on where I was standing. So because of that, I have absolutely no complaints about this brace and I definitely recommend it as an upgrade. This just makes the gun feel more complete to me. Now, speaking of the mods, let's move on to the final one and that is the trigger. The trigger on the Scorpion from the factory is not good in my opinion. It is super heavy. It is probably about a nine and a half to 10 pound pull. It's curved, it's plasticky feeling, and I just really did not like it at all. So of course I went ahead and installed the HB Industries Reduce Weight Trigger Kit, which brought this thing down to about a five and a half pound pull if I had to guess. And then I also installed the Theta Trigger, which is metal and flat face, so it is something that is definitely right up my alley. Now here is a close up look at this trigger because it is flat face, the further down you pull, obviously the more leverage you're going to have. So if you're pulling from towards the bottom of the trigger as opposed to the top, it is going to feel just a little bit lighter. The take up is a little springy and gritty because this gun only really has maybe 200, 250 rounds through it. If you're careful, you can go through the pre-travel back to the wall, which is about right here. And then a bit more pressure, there is a little bit of creep. And then that break. The brake is really nothing to write home about. It's not super crisp. It does feel okay. I can definitely shoot this thing fairly well. And as you saw, I was very accurate with it. Now the reset, this is something that is very tactile and audible. It's very gritty on the way out, as you saw there. You can definitely feel the reset, but overall I think this trigger could use a little bit more tuning. Maybe, like I said, it needs to just be broken in a bit more. Maybe I could polish some of the internals. But for the most part, it is okay, especially after these upgrades. The stock trigger though, definitely not a fan of it. So the trigger is fine for what I will be using this gun for, which is honestly just another fun range gun. If you want to shoot from a platform that feels more like a rifle, then this is definitely a good route to go. It's still chambered in 9mm, so it's going to be a lot cheaper to shoot than say something like 300 Blackout or even 5.56. And the blowback design is definitely a really cool experience. It's fun to kind of feel that pressure coming back towards you. And it is definitely fun to run around the range with and put a lot of rounds down. I could have shot this thing way more than I did, so chances are I'm going to do it some more in the future. One other quick note that I wanted to mention was this hand stop here. Because this is a short barrel, you really have to be careful with where you are indexing your hand up front. Even with this hand stop here, it is very easy to get your thumb in a dangerous situation out here near the muzzle. When I was in the moment shooting there, I must have had my thumb riding a little bit too close towards the end of the muzzle here, and I caught a little bit of the blast coming from that muzzle break. Now obviously it's not something that is like blowing my thumb off, but it is one of those very firm reality checks that's like, hey, make sure you keep your hand clear of that muzzle. So when shooting this, I was definitely keeping that in mind and I was trying to kind of modify my grip to keep my thumb back here as far as possible. Now for the ultimate question, something that probably a lot of people are going to be asking me, would I prefer a Scorpion Evo or would I choose the Chris Vector if I could only have one? Both of these guns came as pistols. I also put some very similar upgrades on them. I probably went a little more high quality with the Vector because overall this thing feels like a little bit more of a solid platform. But from the start, if I was only picking one gun, I still think that I would go with the Vector. 
These guns are definitely very purposely built. Like the Scorpion for an example, I can still fold up this stock and this fit in my Vertex bag. I took this gun in the exact configuration as you see it now with like five or six different magazines. I fit them all in a small backpack and I was able to go to the range and shoot all day. That is basically all that I will be doing with a gun like this and the Vector as well. Now if you're talking about picking up one of these guns to use in a self-defense situation, maybe home defense or like a truck gun, this is definitely going out on a limb here, but I personally would not choose either of these for a role like that. I personally don't even like the idea of a truck gun, as people call it. So for me, these two are just really fun guns to shoot out on the range. You kind of get the best of both worlds when you're comparing these two next to each other. If I were to do it over again and I could only choose one of these, I would probably still opt for the Vector, but why not just own both of them? So that is going to be it for my thoughts on the CZ Scorpion. If you guys have any questions on this thing or any of the modifications that I did, feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I will try to answer them as best as possible. Again, I have to give a huge shout out to the Patreons for requesting this gun and allowing me to pick it up. If someday I see you guys out at the range, you are absolutely 100% more than welcome to shoot this thing and basically do whatever you guys want to it. Now, if you are not on Patreon and you want to be a part of the next decision of what gun we choose here on Sunday Gun Day, I always leave links for that in the description down below, so check it out if you feel like it. One more shout out to Panda Tactical, of course. They supplied the ammo for this episode of Sunday Gun Day. And without them, these videos would not be possible, so please go check them out on Instagram and tell them that I sent you. Now, if you are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week, and that is going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.